I'm going to show you how to make this lovely pair of 1 12th scale bedside cabinets. They've got this lovely sort of moulded feature at the bottom. And for this I've used, again, my favourite wood to use, a beche, which is spelled O-B-E-C-H-E. If you can't get hold of a beche, um, have a look at my working with wood video which is on this channel and I'll give you some ideas of other types of craft wood that you can use for this sort of project. And you'll need three thicknesses um, of wood for this. Um, a 0.8mm, which is almost like a veneer, which we use for the drawer front. And then a 1.5 or 1 16th of an inch and a 2.5 of an inch thickness, and that's just for the top part. Glue. Use this Gorilla Wood glue, which bonds really quickly. You'll need a craft knife. My favourite is this Swan Morton knife, which takes a size 10A blade. Always put a new blade in at the start of a project or when it begins to catch along the wood. That means it's becoming blunt. A nice sharp pencil for accurate marking. A steel rule used for measuring and for cutting the wood along with the craft knife. I've used a tool called a scribe um, for shaping the mouldings at the bottom of the bedside cabinet there. But basically it's just a tool with a sharp point at the end. This is out of an old electrical um, kit. But it does the job perfectly. I've used a 2.5mm, 332nd of an inch um, wooden draw knob. And these are available in my Etsy store. You'll find a link for there below as well. And I've finished the cabinet using um, a dark oak interior varnish and this is just a normal household interior varnish. You might want to paint yours. You can just use any sort of interior emulsion for that. And then a couple of grades of sandpaper and I use a 500, which is a nice soft one, um, for finishing. And a 120 grade for sanding the edges of the cut wood and for shaping the wood as well. I think that's everything you're going to need. The cutting list is coming up next. And then we'll get started. Okay, so begin with your back and side pieces, and they're all the same size, so it doesn't matter which you use for which. And we're going to begin by drawing a pencil line 15 millimeters from this top edge on each of the pieces. Now just to save a bit of time, I just stick them together using a little piece of masking tape. So make sure the top edge is straight, and then just stick those together and that way you just have to draw one line rather than three and then just make the pencil mark at each end of the piece so that's 15 millimeters so I just make a little pencil line there and 15 millimeters again from the top edge and then join those up and you just want to place the ruler just below that pencil line just to allow for the thickness of your pencil like that, and remove your masking tape, get rid of that, and then I've just dispensed some glue here onto a piece of cereal packet card, and I'm going to use a cocktail stick to apply it, and I'm going to attach one of the side pieces to the outer edge of this back piece. So apply glue along the edge the back piece and then attach the side piece so that the top and bottom is level with the top and bottom of the back piece and your pencil line will be in alignment as well. And I've got another clean cocktail stick here and I'm just going to remove that glue very carefully from along that join 
And this is very important if you're going to be varnishing your piece because varnish won't take over glue residue. So make sure you get rid of it all at this stage. And then just pop that to one side to dry off for a moment. And I'm making two of these cabinets, so I've made a start on the first one. And that's now dry enough to handle. And then take your top piece, and again you've got three pieces here the same. Your top, your bottom and your shelf. Apply glue along a short and a long edge. And always so that your nicest edge is going to be facing forward. Now, there might not be a difference, but if you've got one that's just not quite as smooth as the other, then always make sure the nicest edge is forward. And you want to just glue that into place on the inside edge of those joined pieces and so that it's flush with the top. And pull the side in to meet it if you need to. And that will ensure that everything's square. And press that all together. And then take the second piece. Again, apply your glue. And then this piece is going to sit just above those pencil lines so that we can just about see the pencil line. Again, press it into place so that the corner is right into the corner of the joint pieces. And then the same thing again with the final piece, the bottom piece. Again, make sure it's flush with the bottom of the joined pieces. You can just use your finger to do that. Not quite flush along that bottom there, I'll just move that into position. And then apply glue to the side exposed edges. Down there as well. And then you can attach the remaining side piece and you've got your pencil line there just to make sure that that second piece stays in place, in the correct place. Make sure all these front edges are nice and flush. The top and bottom as well. And if you get glue on your fingers, do go and wash it off rather than waiting for it to dry and picking it off. So in there you can see, I hope, the shelf is still in line, or just sitting underneath that pencil line. And we've got a nice flush square piece. So I'm going to use a piece of masking tape now to hold that all in place. You can use clamps um, if you want to, but I just find with smaller pieces masking tape is easier. And I'm going to put a piece right over the side like that, pull it quite tight, but making sure you don't push any of the pieces out of place. over that back as well, like that, 
and that piece can then be left to dry and we'll come back and attach the next pieces. Okay, so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the masking tape and then sand that piece on all sides. And I also hold it um, against the sandpaper like that and just go round in small circular motions. And that's just to make sure you've got nice flush edges along this front. Okay, so take um, the side mouldings and I just want to bevel one long edge. I don't know if you can see that there. But she's got a slight sort of chamfered edge along there. And to do that, hold the piece against your sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and just sweep it towards you, keeping it at that same angle. You don't have to press too hard and you only have to go along sort of four or five times to create the beveled edge there to one side and then we're going to glue these at each side at the bottom um, of the cabinet so apply a line of glue along each bottom edge and just to the thickness of that sort of bottom piece there about 1.5 millimeters or 1 16th of an inch you don't have to be precise but that's just where we're going to be gluing the molding to Okay, and then take first moulding, and so the bevel side is obviously forward and facing upwards. Attach the piece so that the top is in line with the sort of top of this bottom piece. Like that, and then just use your eye to check that it's straight along to the back but you can also then use your ruler. So measure from the top of the cabinet to the top of the moulding. That's 38 millimetres or one and a half inches. And then measure the same distance at the back. And I just need to come down very slightly there at the back. And then you can use your other cocktail stick to remove the glue. And just do that really carefully so you don't knock the piece out of place. And then attach the other one to the other side. I'm just going to reapply that glue. And again, so that the bevel at the front is level with the top of that bottom piece there and then just measure to make sure both sides are the same distance from the top 38 millimeters I need again to move that down a touch make sure there's no excess glue And then that piece can be left to dry. And I've got the second cabinet over here, and that's now nice and dry. So take the back moulding, and, and again, just bevel that one long edge. And then apply glue at the back of the cabinet to the ends of those side mouldings, and then along that back edge. And then again, glue the mould in so the bevelled edge will be at the top. And so that the bottom of it is level with the bottom of those sides. Now you might have a little overhang at either side, but don't worry about that because we'll, once the glue's dried, we'll go over with our sandpaper and just tidy that up. And we'll tidy up these corners as well to make that look a bit neater. So on this one, you just want the bottom edges to be flush that all together carefully get rid of the excess glue and 
Okay, and you can just pop that to one side to dry. Like I say, these edges won't look very neat at the moment, but we will tidy those up afterwards. And then take the remaining moulding, which is the front moulding, and cut a piece of paper to the same size as the piece of the piece of wood, as the piece of wood. Fold it in half, and this is going to be the pattern for our moulding. And I just want to keep this one really simple because it's so small. It's just easier to keep it simple. So I'm just going to do a curve from the centre there, and then bring it back down again to create sort of a foot at this end. So just a really simple curve like that and then cut that out open out the template and then you want to trace that onto the piece of wood so I'm, I'm just doing it upside down but that's just so I can get to it easier and just leave enough so you've got sort of enough to fit in the um, thickness of the pencil nib there. And just copy that onto the piece of wood. Like that. And then just pop that to one side because you'll need it for your other cabinet if you're making a pair. And take your scribe and just score the pencil line into the wood. And you're not trying to cut through at this stage, we just want to make a groove along that pencil line. And I find that by doing that first it helps to keep the craft knife on track when we come to cut it out. If you watch a lot of my tutorials, you'll know I really like this technique. I think it adds a really nice sort of detail to a piece. So now I've just scored the pattern into the wood. Now I'm going to take the craft knife and now just start cutting into that. But don't try and sort of cut it out at first, you just want to go into the wood slightly deeper. And I always say it, but please do be aware of where your fingers are. I've had many knife cuts from this technique, so just always be careful. So you're just going deeper into that groove, just a little bit at a time, and then gradually you'll begin to cut through. And don't be tempted to pull the piece of wet away or you'll split the wood. Just keep going until you're completely through, like that. I hope you can see me now. I just realised I might not be fully in camera shot, which isn't very helpful. So I'm just doing a little bit at a time. And it's always easier when you're cutting with the grain rather than against it. Just using the very tip of the craft knife as well. And if you find a particularly stubborn piece, it's probably because there's a little bit of a knot in the wood. Cut out the basic shape there and then just take a piece of fine grain sandpaper and just sand along the cut. Just straightening off the edge at this stage. And if you've got sort of grooves like that you can just wrap it around a piece of paper, oh, sorry around a pencil and work that into the shape.
And then next take your sandpaper from front to back and I'll just create a slight chamfer along the pattern there. It just makes it look a lot neater. Round off any sort of square corners you've got. And just keep going until you're happy that you've got a nice smooth shape. And then we're going again to bevel the long edge of this piece as well. So take your sandpaper and just hold that again at a 45 degree angle and sweep it towards you so the bevel will be on the neat side of the piece. Like that, just tidy that up again. And then we can attach that piece to the front again by applying glue along the side mouldings and along that bottom front edge. And then attach the piece so that it's just sitting along that front edge. And again, you might have a slight overhang at either side. Don't worry about that, we'll sand that off. Just use your finger or thumb there to make sure that it's flush so the opening is nice and flat there. And those bottom corners should be flush with the side mouldings as well. Pop that up a bit. that so again that piece can be left to dry and once it is completely dry we'll tidy up all of these edges and the corners okay so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry we can tidy up these corners so using your sort of heavier grade sandpaper I'm using 120 grade just begin by sort of rounding off the front corners rounding from front to back so you're just sweeping the paper over the corner from the front edge and you're making this front moulding level with the side so you don't need to apply too much pressure and just keep checking with your finger until you've sort of got a nice flush edge along this side and you can do that around all edges. And then where you've sort of got a corner, we want to create a sort of rounded corner going down that way. So again, just with the corner of your sandpaper, just sweep from top to bottom of the corner join. And that will just get rid of that sharp top corner. bring the side bevel in with the front bevel so we're just leveling it all off now you've just got a neater flush edge and just do a little bit at a time until you're happy with how it looks okay so I've now done that on all corners it just gives it a nice neat flush look and now we can attach the top so take the cabinet top piece and we're going to bevel one long edge and both short edges and again we're doing that exactly as we did um, those bottom mouldings so hold the piece against your sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and just sweep it towards you So 
do that until you've got a nice neat even bevel on each of those three edges and then apply glue to the top of your cabinet making sure you get it right into the corners and to the sides And then you want to attach the top so that the flat edge is at the back and so that the edges that you've beveled are facing downwards. And then there should be an even overhang at either side. Like that. So press it into place. sure that back edge is straight along there. And I'm just going to hold this in place with a piece of masking tape along the back edge. Pull that nice and tight and just make sure that that stayed in position. And then I like to use clamps along this front edge and that then just avoids having that gap along the top once the glue has dried and once you've put your clamps into place just check along sort of from the side if any glue has come out and then you just want to remove that like that and then I'm just going to put an extra piece of masking tape over the back just to hold that back piece down again pull it quite tightly and like I've said before, when things are drying, wood always try, tends to sort of try and curl upwards. So that's why it's always important to secure pieces together like this. Okay, so that can now be left to dry. And then we've just got to make our drawer. Okay, so again, once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the masking tape and then sand this piece all over using your finer grade sandpaper just to prepare it for varnish or paint. And then in the cutting list I advise you to cut the pieces needed for the drawers after construction of the cabinet and that's just because slight misplacement of this sort of central shelf will affect the size of the drawer opening. And If you've already cut your pieces it's quite annoying when you come to fit the drawer if it doesn't fit properly. So I'll anything with drawers I always advise to cut the pieces after you've constructed the main unit and then when you've done that cut your pieces and when you measure the opening just sort of take off half a millimeter um, from each measurement which will just mean that the drawer fits better and will slide in and out nicely so begin by applying glue along each edge of the drawer base those outer edges and attach a side to each edge so that the front and back of the side pieces are flush with the front and back of the base and get them as upright as you can and then just very gently slide that piece along your worktop and that can be left to dry and here's my second drawer so then apply glue to the front and back of the piece. And then attach the front and back pieces. And again, so that the sides are flush with the sides of the drawer. Just carefully press all that together and again that can be left until the glue is completely dried. Okay 
place. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, sand the drawer on all edges. And I sand it on the sort of top and bottom as well, just by going over the sandpaper in small circular motions like that. And I won't do it now because it's such an awful sound. And then check that you've got a nice fit. That just glides in nicely. And if you need to um, sand a little bit more, then do that. But just do a little bit at a time and keep checking it um, to make sure that it fits properly. And then take the draw front moulding. And again, we're going to bevel all edges. So do the sides in the same way. Support Because it's such a, a thin piece of wood, support it as much as you can with your finger as you're sort of sweeping it along the, the sheet. edge as well. And then when you're doing the long edges, rather than going along like that, because I just I find that the wood tends to split, go along sideways like that. So still holding it at a 45 degree angle. Just come a bit closer. But rather than sweeping it towards you like that, go along the sandpaper. Just sweep it away from you like that. And you get the same effect, but it's just safer to do it that way with your, your finer wood. Otherwise, like I say, it does just tend to split. Do that until you've got nice, even, beveled edges all the way around and then apply glue to the back of the moulding getting it into the corners and then attach it to the draw front so that you're leaving an even border around each side and you, you should just be able to do that by eye just so you've got an even amount at all edges Just carefully press that down. It might slide along as you're pressing it, so just keep making sure that it's still in the right place. Again, remove any excess glue. And then I'm just going to use clamps to hold that into place. And again, that could just be left until the glue has dried. And then once the glue has dried, make a pencil mark in the center. So first of all, find your center lengthways. And don't do a dot as you'll dent the wood. So just do a little faint pencil line like that. And then turn the piece and find the center short ways. This time you can do a little dot and that's where you're going to drill your hole. I always then just rub that out so there's no pencil marks left but of course you can still see the dot because you made a little dent. And Then I'm using this mini drill and I've got a bit in there that is um, two, that makes a two millimeter hole and that's the size of the end of my wooden draw knob. So you want to drill a hole that's the size of the end there. And this is a 2.5 millimeter draw knob across there. So just measure that, the bit that sort of goes in. And, and that's the size of the drill bit you'll need. And put that directly over your mark and then just drill it. And then once you're through, I just sort of twist it around like that, just so that I know the, the sort of wooden bit will go in. And then before you apply glue, just check that it does. Check that you've got a nice snug fit. 
and then I always just put a little tiny dot of glue in the hole. Like that. And that just keeps it in place. And just press that in. And again, it's really important to remove the excess glue here if you're going to be varnishing the piece. Otherwise you get that awful sort of faint varnish around the outside edge of the knob and it looks awful. And there's the completed drawer. So this is now ready to be varnished. I'm going to do two coats and after the first coat has dried I'll just give it a gentle sand and then apply the second coat and that way you get a really nice finish. And here are the completed cabinets. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please do subscribe to my channel as there's lots more to come. And remember, if there's anything you'd like to see a tutorial for, just pop a comment below and I'll do my best to include it here. If you enjoy making Doll's House miniatures, you might be interested in my books. I've published three so far. I'll pop a link below which will take you directly over to Amazon. Each book includes lots of tutorials, all laid out in easy to follow step by step tutorials. There's lots of tips and advice on making miniatures too, so I hope you'll have a look at those. And for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.